Season's greetings from Board and Table Radio. I'm Chuck Dyson. Whenever the holidays come around, I whip myself into quite the frenzy. I become Chuck, the Christmas guy. I'm so full of cheer, I got tinsel coming out the wazoo. Don't you get all warm and tingly inside just thinking about it? I know I do. And boy, have I got a sack full of treats for all the good girls and boys out there in hobby podcast land. Including, but not limited to, the Holiday Hoot, the Yuletide Chinwag, and more. So, when you play us at your Christmas party, during your holiday commute, or just as you slip into that fruitcake-induced coma, we know we've got that last little special something to scratch off your wish list. So happy holidays to you, and enjoy. Hey, recording. Chuck Dyson here from Board and Table Podcast with another commute. Who? I'm uh, on the first leg of the journey, and wouldn't you know it if it hasn't begun to snow. Right? Snow winter time. <laughs> and this one is hibernation. Hibernation game. How are you guys doing out there, man? I'm uh, I'm a happy guy. I'm a happy guy when it starts to snow. I don't know. I'm weird. We're up here in uh, New England. That's that's where old Chuck's broadcasting from. And <clears throat> year after year, uh, as the seasons change, right? <laughs> as the seasons change, uh, you know, we start to get. Uh, into hibernation mode up here in winter. Uh, snow's starting to fall now. Oh man, here comes some, some DOT trucks. Oh boy! I'm getting excited, man. I get all up in it. I love... I love... There's many things I love in this world. Yes. A good cup of tea. <laughs> a full pipe. And a nice snowy day spent indoors, right? Just warming up and uh, and hunkering down, digging in, digging in. And I hope you're digging in because uh, if so, maybe you're from a cold climb. And uh, maybe it's winter where and when you're listening to this. If it is, hey, cheers to you. Raise a mug, pipe in a pint, and... Uh, well, let's get into some hibernation game. I, uh, I, I think back to uh, some old winters of youth. I remember uh, once upon a time having an old Gundam kit. <laughs> yep, that's right. It was an old uh, H HG, I think. It was a high grade, maybe. Um, one one forty fourth scale and uh I don't remember which series it was and unfortunately the packaging and the words and the directions were all in Japanese. So uh I'm not I'm not too fluent in my Japanese. But it was a nice kit. It was um you know by today's standards maybe lacking in a little bit of articulation or I don't know, maybe it wasn't as, as stable. That didn't uh, didn't have enough structure, but uh, anyway, for my you know for my uh, eleven or twelve year old needs, it was plenty. It was an awesome kit actually uh, for me at that time. I, I had just started to get into the Bandai kits, and um, so that was something that was new. The the you know the way they piece those kits together. If you're if uh, if anyone's into this and uh, and you are into well first of all if you're into gun plug you know get at me get at me dog Arr! Uh, <laughs> that was that was horrible that was bad uh, DMX is rolling in his grave <laughs> and he's not even dead <laughs> oh uh, get at me though if you're into the gun plug gun gun power you must build your kit man do not let it collecting dust. You must use your powers. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, wait, hold on. I got a, got a guy on my left signaling. Signal in here. Uh, no, no mercy. Uh, Gunpla kits, man. They're awesome. So if you're into them, you know about them. And if not, I uh, let me be a sort of a, a de facto quasi spokesperson for Bandai, man. I can't help it, but I, uh, I'm a sucker for a good model kit. And uh, I know one when I see one. And, and many Gundam models are good kits. They're just fun to build. And, um, you know, the way they come together and the joints and everything. Anyway, I'm talking about hibernation. This kit, uh, all of this started to uh, kind of come to life to me one day. Or, or maybe a series of days in winter. Back when I was but a lad, right? And um, I remember it being cold and gray outside and uh, not much to do, not nowhere really to go. And, um, it, you know, obviously it gets dark too. It get, it, you know, the days are shorter uh, when it's December now. But, you know, we're, we're, like I said, we're digging in. We're digging in, man. We're hunkering, bunkering. Um, so I was, an, I was hunkered and bunkered with this little Gundam kit. And, um, the, you know, the smell of spray paint, right? Like these little things come back to my memory. I remember the smell of the spray paint because, uh, the kit came in this off colored plastic and, uh, the actual robot was supposed to be, uh, so if you don't know about Gundam kits, Gundam is a Jap, uh, long running Japanese series, cartoon series, uh, or anime, manga, whatever, featuring giant robots that people pilot fight each other with <laughs> there you go there's the there's the uh, brutally reductive synopsis right <laughs> kids kids program meant to sell stuff um but you know good good as far as that is concerned right high, high quality to be sure um you know hence why I, I like the the gundam models and i like the gundam series too series is i should say it's a whole whole mythos but um yeah, so the 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 robot kit was this. It's supposed to be white, um, with like this shield and uh, you know different colors. It's like grays for the or gun metal for the gun, right? Um, and I remember you know spray painting it and having a rough go of it. You know, getting my fingers all sticky on the spray paint and the smell of it too. All of that, and I remember. Um, the fiddly bits like that, trying to put on certain stickers. I also remember, like I was alluding to a minute ago, uh, you know, the wonder of the, the the build of the kit. Then this is uh, this is kind of um, the heart of the topic, I think. When you're when you're hibernating as a gamer, modeler, right, hobbyist, listener of uh, BNT, um, you have. Uh, you have a repertoire. You have somewhere to go. You have something to do. Even if you've got nowhere to go and nothing to do. <laughs> right? You're you're used to this. You're a survivalist in this regard. Because we've all got little kits and books and uh, RPGs and hobbies and stuff we can kind of escape to. And, um, and uh, that was very much me as a kid with this kit. Um, you know, nothing really to do, uh, and at that age, I was kind of out of, you know, those earlier, you know, because I had just moved, and so there was like a program, I think when I was like a year earlier, when I was 11 or something, there was like a after school, anyway, at this point, there was, it was just, you know, school and home, and, and, uh, and early nights, you know, the, 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 the night came on quick it was dark and um and yeah some of the bits of this kit coming to life and uh just enjoying the thrill of the build as i like to say um and i think it was kind of well it was one of the more uh, uh sublime there we go there's a word one of those more more sublime uh you know experiences of my hobby being able to zone out and focus on this thing and 
and uh, suffer through it a little bit too. Um, you know, but it's all ultimately for fun. The stakes aren't really, you know, there's no real high stakes there except for maybe wasting the money on the kit, uh, which was definitely definitely precious at that point actually <laughs> memory serves me i would have to do dishes for a couple weeks um to get a to get a gunpla kit and um and uh yeah because i would either i would either get a booster pack of pokemon or a gunpla kit you know or, or some other such thing i would need you know when i couldn't get the you know, when I couldn't get the one, I would save for the other. <laughs> Going back and forth with my twin addictions. I was very, very into anime as a kid. Very, uh, very pimply. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, the gunpla kit. And, you know, wouldn't you know it, didn't come out half bad. Unfortunately, in the years since, uh, time was not kind to my humble little early Gundam kit. And, um, you know, getting rattled around in boxes and things, it just, it didn't, didn't survive. But, um, you know, maybe it did, right? Maybe that, that, maybe that Gundam kid would always be a little, a little immortal in its own way. It'll survive in this memory, this talk, (laughs) and this nonsensical record, (laughs) if it ever makes it anywhere. Um... Uh, but it had a life of its own, right? In that way. And we all remember our kits or our, you know, our projects, our lists, whatever it was we were working on on those solitary winter days. And uh, so if you are a fellow hobbyist or gamer, hey, uh, be encouraged. As the winter months start to roll on, you know you know what your strategy is, right? What's your hibernation game like? Because I know what my hibernation game's like. It's off the freaking charts, right? I got tables I'm making. I got minis I'm painting. I got models I'm crafting. Ah! Freaking crazy. I'm juggling it. But I love it. I'm having a good time doing it. And I hope you are too, as well, also. So, uh... So that's kind of the uh, the long and short of it. Hibernation game. I um, last year I kind of touched on uh, you know to bring it more up to date. I had a cube, a, uh, a Magic the Gathering cube I was putting together. Now this is different. This isn't a modeling project, but it's still you know it's still board and table, right? It's still gaming, gaming and hobby. And the cube, I failed to mention this last time, but another one of the reasons I think that it kind of came around this time is because uh, I got to give a shout out here to Milo. Milo, I love you, man. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Milo's uh, holiday Magic the Gathering stuff, man. I freaking love this stuff. Uh, I really, I couldn't be more sincere or heartfelt about it. I actually, um, last year around the holiday times, uh, you know, to take a more, put a more serious note on it, um, it, you know, I I had some things come up uh, around the holiday, uh, me and me and some of the friends, and uh, it was uh, when we all hung out. Uh, I made the cube in order for us to play Three Kings Day. That's a big day. It's a big day for uh, board and table, all right. Them, them board and table boys, they're uh, they're at it hard on Three Kings Day, man. Right? The Three Kings are really there. Um, but uh, but it, it was um, you know, we were there in full force, but it was a little more solemn too. And uh, this cube, man. And watching these Milo, oh, back to the Milo vids, watching these Milo vids, too, in the Holiday Cube, it just put me in the freaking mood, man. It just got me, you know, got me all geared up, full of vim and vigor. And um, and that's worth something, man. So big shout-out to Milo, and, and 
everyone who helped to do those cubes, people participating and filming and editing. I'm sure a lot goes into that stuff. I'm already starting to learn it here on my own end. But uh, the cube was what I was crafting last winter, and that was a hibernation endeavor. Whew, that was a Herculean effort. It was definitely quite an effort, and um, in the end, you know, I had the Three Kings Day to look forward to and, and help me power through it, and, and I had the videos too to kind of watch and have in the background, and all the other cubers. A Magic the Gathering cube, if you play Magic the Gathering, is something very bored and table, let me tell you. If you're, if you're a Magic the Gathering player, and you're a bored and tableist, all right, Go cube, go cube. All right, you're you're listening for this. This is this is Chuck telling you. I'm giving you permission. All right, or perhaps ex extolling the virtues of the cube. Um, it's really in line with what we do. Um, partly because it's um, it's cheap. <laughs> I like to. Uh, I like to extol the virtues of, of games and things that are more affordable and, uh, you know, on the cheap side for everyone to be able to get into and participate. But not just that it's cheap, but it's, uh, um, it's just, it's just the cat's pajamas, man. I mean, I don't, you know, what else can you say about it? It's your own bespoke collection of magic, all the best of the best of the stuff that you got that you like. You put it into the cube. It's a singleton, so one card of each, right? For Magic the Gathering players, uh, CCG. I I don't I don't think I'll explain that. I mean, you know, you ought to know what Magic is, but so singleton, one of each card, and uh, mine was like three hundred and some odd cards, and then you draft, okay? And if you ever had, if you ever played Magic the Gathering and drafted. You know what a fun experience drafting is. Drafting is when you kind of build a deck just impromptu. You show up on a draft night. It's a it's a tournament thing. It's a competitive thing. You show up, uh, which card games, by the way, lend themselves to. That's a that's a that's a topic for another discussion, right? The competition of games and etiquette and uh, you know one game versus another. Where they, where they sort of lie on the spectrum. I, card games are real cutthroat, but they're good in that way, right? You don't want to hold back. That, that, they're at their best when they're like that. Um, but uh, you draft them, you make the deck right on the spot out of a couple booster packs. And so a booster pack is a random, yet again, it's all random, assortment of, of like, I think, 11 cards. You get a couple booster packs, you make a deck, boom, play with it right that night really really fun as you're drafting your cards right where the the, the format gets its namesake um but unfortunately you know you got to buy the boosters every time you got to show up you got to you know you know right now at time of recording this we're still in pandemic you know uh mania and so that's a nightmare you can't even do a draft unless it's like underground i don't even know how the heck you're gonna do that what, are you going to play Magic in, like, a speakeasy? <laughs> we're going to have, we're going to have, uh, gamer pro prohibition speakeasy places. I'll have a, I'll play a 1500 of 40k in a sarsaparilla. Um, so the cube, oh, yeah, so the cube is a, it, 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 enter the cube, okay? Voila, bling, bling, sparkle, sparkle. In comes the cube as the remedy, right? Because you know you're hanging with your pod, right? That's uh, that's common. That's common lingo now. Your pod, your group of people among the, the pandemic, your safe folk, your circle. Um. And so, what better way to kind of do a little tourney and get the draft experience than having a cube? Folks who built the cube around this time last year, like me, tip of the cap. We're, we just got lucky. We happen to get lucky, right? We're resilient now. We got a little bit of extra, a uh, little bit of extra, uh, right? Gamer resilience. We're fortified there. I got a cube built. If we want to play that sucker now, I break it out. What you want, sucker? But, um, God, I'm rambling on this. 
Might be some hamburger meat here. Uh, some ham sandwiches. But um, the cube was my last hibernation project, right? Hibernation hypercreation. Ooh, that's uh, that would be a good title for this. Hibernation hypercreation. Uh, I made the cube last year, and um, well, I'm kind of coming to the close of it, and uh, I'd be danged if I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I'm, I'm not looking forward, or if I if I didn't say I'm looking forward to this year's project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm looking forward to it. The snow tapered off. I wish it was snowing through this whole drive, but hey, it will be sooner than you know it. And you know what? When it does, Chuck's gonna be ready. I don't know with what. Might be ready with a model. Might be ready with a table. Might be ready with the cube. But I'll be ready with a pint and a pipe. And you're going to be too, man. Because we're all going to be there on the same wavelength, right? Hibernation, guys. Uh, do it. Fortify. Dig in. Hunker and bunker. And let me know how it works for you, man. What's your strategy? What's your thing? Because we all got our jam. All right. Chuck Dyson, Board and Table Podcast. Sign it out. Shh, shh, shh.